Hello everyone, my name is Beansprout and today we're going to be ranking all of the Doom games from worst to best. With each game I will give you my thoughts so you can try and better understand my point of view, but with that said I'd also like if you could keep in mind that this is all my personal opinion, and that you can feel free to leave your own list in the comment section down below, as it's a great way of expanding the discussion. Also remember to like the video to push it out to more people who'd like to join in on that discussion. I'd also like to mention that this is only the mainline games, so don't get mad at me if any side games are not included as that usually happens when I make lists like this. But anyway, I don't want to keep you in this intro for too long, so let's get into the first one. Doom 64 was released in 1996, and graphically when compared to other games at the time like Quake, it was a bit lacking. The first ever 3D FPS games were starting to come out, and Doom 64 were, well, it wasn't quite 3D. And like I said, if you compare it to, say, Quake from the same year, well, it doesn't really hold up that well. I'd also like to say that out of the three classic Doom games, it feels a lot more clunky than you'd think it would. Although I'm gonna bet that that would probably be fixed with different source ports. The big issue I've always had with the game is that the music makes it a kind of bit boring. Let me explain. So up until the point of Doom 64, we was used to hearing music like this. which was composed by Bobby Prince. But then when Doom 64 came out, we then got introduced to hearing this. Which was composed by Aubrey Hodges. The only thing with this though is that Bobby Prince's music is a lot more exciting and it fits the games a lot more. I get that Doom 64 was going for a darker, more horror focused tone, but it's just boring. It's, it's nowhere near, it's nowhere near as fun to listen to as the original Doom games. And while Doom 64 is by no means a bad game, I just think it's nowhere near as good as any of the other games. But anyway, that's enough of Doom 64, let's move on to our next game. Doom 3 was released in 2004, which was a very, very crowded year for shooters, with games such as Halo 2, Half-Life... I wrote Half-Life 3 on my script by accident, I don't know why. I was really tired writing it. Anyway, with titles such as Halo 2, Half-Life 2, Far Cry, and many, many more. Doom 3 is often looked down upon, but I don't think it's nearly as bad as many people think. People often say, it's a good game, but it's not a good Doom game which I believe to be false, as it's indeed both of these things. And if you've actually played through all of Doom 3, then you'd probably understand why I think this, as most of the people who say that line haven't played anything past the first mission in the BFG edition, which is probably the worst way to play Doom 3. I enjoy Doom 3 a lot, and while I hate to put it lower on the list, I just think that the other games that I've not mentioned are a lot more fun in comparison. But I'm also not going to absolutely slate Doom 3 like a lot of people do, because this game is genuinely a lot of fun. And if you haven't played it, then I highly recommend you do. And to anyone who's going to start commenting about how the game isn't a real Doom game, I encourage you to go play it first. But anyway, let's move on. The original Doom was released in 1993, and serves as one of the very first building blocks towards what we know as the first person shooter. At the time of its release, it was very innovative, and it introduced an and it introduced many never- And it introduced- oh my god. And it introduced many never before seen features. Which would include things like elevators. In the modern day, I think the game holds up pretty well. Although I would recommend playing through it with a source port such as GZ Doom for the best experience. As playing through on the Unity ports isn't really the most fun, and I wouldn't recommend using DOSBox. Like I said in the Doom 64 segment, I think the music is great in this game, and in fact, it's kind of legendary. This game has some of the most famous music ever seen in any video games, and it's easy to see why. But now, let's once again move on. Doom 2 was released in 1994, a year after the first game. It isn't all that different from the original, but it introduces a lot of new enemies, and it was also the first game in the series to introduce the Super Shotgun. This is my boomstick! 
which has now become a staple of the series and the reason why double barreled shotguns are associated with Doom. I very, very much enjoy playing Doom 2, and while some people say that the first game is better due to the level design in Doom 2, I still believe that Doom 2 is more fun. My reason for this is that it has all of the new enemies in it, and it's kind of a complete package, whereas in the first game, you're missing out on a lot of enemies and you don't have the Super Shotgun, which if I'll be honest is one of the main reasons why I put it above Doom 1, because the Super Shotgun is probably the most fun thing in any of these games. But speaking of fun things, let's move on to our next game. Doom 2016 was released in, well, 2016, and was a sort of soft reboot for the series. Although we did later find out that it wasn't a full rebooting of the series, as it does continue on from the original games, but it just made it a bit easier for newer players like myself to get into it. And that's probably the reason why it managed to revive the series and bring it back into the public eye, after its very long 12 year hiatus. The game had a great atmosphere created by its sci-fi visuals and industrial, sometimes grungy sounding style of Mel which in fact ties in perfectly with my own personal tastes. Without this game, myself and millions of other people would never have experienced any of what this series has to offer. So it really is a good thing that this came out. Now, let's go on to our last game on the list. Released in 2020, Doom Eternal may have been one of, if not the best id Software games, and possibly even one of the best first-person shooters to have been made. The game makes use of director Hugo Martin's fun zone theory in order to make the player feel engaged in the experience and think about what they are doing while they play, instead of mindlessly mowing down enemies. The game also has an absolutely phenomenal sound to it, and everything from the music to the pickup effects have been made in such a way that the whole game feels like a fluid experience, and nothing really sticks out obnoxiously. Doom Eternal is probably my favourite game that I've ever played, and it's what this channel has been built off of. So I'd like to say thank you to everyone at id Software who created this game, and even this whole series in general. Because without it, you wouldn't be watching this video right now. But I'm eager to find out what you all think, so let me know in the comments, give me your lists and your reasons why. Along with that, I'd recommend liking the video and subscribing to the channel to try and grow the discussion a bit more. And if you'd like to discuss it with more people who are like-minded, then I'd recommend joining my Discord server. It's a great way to find some new friends online and socialise about the stuff you like. If you'd like to further support me, I've got a merch store, so I'd highly recommend checking that out if you're interested. And if you want to watch any more videos similar to this, you can check out my latest video on the left. And you can also check out my video on why Ultra Kill's Cyber Grind is better than Doom Eternal's Horde Mode on the right. But other than that, thank you for watching, and as always, have a nice day.